Welcome to the second part of our report. So the topics that we will be, we will be discussing here would be the different types of man management tools, uh, introduction to SWOT analysis, and the VGMO, the identification and formulation. So under the man management tools, we have management by objective, managerial grid training, contingency leadership, zero defects, brainstorming, job enrichment, job enlargement, job rotation, and flexible work schedule. The first man management tools is the management by objective. It is a tool which measures performance against objective set. So the man management or management by objectives is a strategic management model that aims to improve the performance of an organization by clearly defining objectives that are agreed to both management and employees. There are three steps on how to conduct this tool. The first one is that the manager and subordinate jointly identify and work out realistic performance objectives. After that, they will agree on the means for achieving the aforementioned objectives. And the last part, they will compare actual results to expected results at the end of the agreed period. Managerial Grid was published on 1964. Ang nakahimo ni si Blake Newton, si Blake ug si Newton. So, the grid came into existence when Blake and Newton hired, were hired as a consultant by Exxon. They wanted to give the most nuanced picture of the leader than you get by using Mark Twerg or Exxon Y theory. The leader is placed in the managerial grid and he takes into only two dimensions. So this is the grid of Blake and Newton. So the grid is based in two behavioral dimensions, which is concern for people and so y axis. I say x axis is concern for result. Concern for people. Kay mo niya ang highly prioritize ang needs, interests, of personal development sa team members niya sa concern for result. Mao niya ang emphasize the efficiency of productivity of your team and or all people so the grid shows five management style based on the balance on these two concern two concerns so the impoverished management monisha ang low focus on getting the job done or has little interest in motivating team members maka result siya of dissatisfaction and disorganization so the produces or perish management Mauli siya ang totally focused on result and doesn't pay much attention on the needs of his team members. So, ang rule ani kay makaproduce siya o good result at first, but ang moral niya is mulo well, will moral niya kay low, which eventually affect the performance and retention of, of the team. So, next is the middle of the road management it tries to balance result and people but it always making compromises maka ma fail siya sa pag inspire sa iyang ka team sa high performance ug ma-meet ang needs sa iyang ka team members so ang mga result ani nga ma-produce is mediocre next is the country club manager muni siya ang karang most concerned about his team members and feelings often the result in a fun <coughs> so, ang result ani kay fun, relaxing workplace, but the productivity kay makasuffer due to lack of motivations, directions, and control. So, next is team management, ang pinakalas and most effective management style. So, iparitize niya ang better getting work done o ang needs sa iyahang ka team or sa people. Ilang i-make sure nga ang ka-team member understand the organization's goal and that have a share in achieving them. So, this creates an environment based on trust, respect, which leads to high satisfaction, increased motivation, and excellent result. Next is um, the Fedler's Contingency Model. Contingency Model of Leadership. So, it was created in mid-1960s by Fred Fedler, a scientist who studied a personality and characteristic of leaders. The model states that there is no best 
style of leadership. Instead, a leader's effectiveness is based on situation. This is the result of two factors leadership. The two factors leadership is um, leadership style and situational favorableness. Identifying leadership style is a, is a first step in using this model. Fedlers believe that the leadership style is fixed and it can be measured using a scale he developed called least preferred co-workers, other known as LPC scale. You can use the scale to generate a cumulative score based on your perception of your co-workers' characteristic traits and attitude. So next is the situational favorableness. It is um, depends on three distinct factors, the leader-member relationship, task structured, and leader's position power. So leader-member relationship, mauni siya ang level of trust and confidence nga gihatag sa team nimo. Ang leader nga mo, most trusted and has more influence sa grupo, mao ni siya ang mas mo favor ang situation than a leader nga dili, dili trusted sa ihang ka-team. Next is the task structured. Mao ni siya ang refer sa type of task nga gibuhat clearly. Clearly and structured or unstructured. Unstructured task mao ni siya ang where the team and the leader have little knowledge how to achieve them are views unfavorably. Next is the leader's position power. More siyang amount of power you have to direct the group and provide reward or punishment. The more power nga naka, the more mo favor niyo mo situation. So, ano si Fed, according ni Fedler, identify niya ang power as um, either strong or weak. More to siya ang sa situational favorableness ang three distinct factors next is um, application of Fedler's contingency model so how to use the Fedler's contingency model step number one identify your leadership remember the LPC attribute chart you are you use that to arrive at a cumulative score so gamiton to yung sa katong sa leadership style nga LPC leader scoring low with is task oriented on the LPC are effective regardless of whether the factors are favorable or not high LPC score which are relation oriented are effective factors are a middle of the road furthermore a score of 57 below is considered as low LPC score and a leader style is trust task oriented then a score between 58 and 63 is considered a middle lpc score this means the leader could have a task oriented or a relationship oriented tendencies next is a score over 64 is considered as high lpc score and the leader is relationship oriented step number two is to identify your situation Answer the question. Are leader-member relations good or poor? Is a task you're doing structured or it is more unstructured? Do you have a little experience of solving similar problems? Do you have a, store, a strong or weak power of your team? You have to answer that in order to identify your situation. So lastly, step number three. It is to determine the most effective leadership style. This chart shown the breakdown of all the factors we've covered leader with covered leader member relationship, task structured and leader position power. So the final column identifies the type of leader that peddlers believe would be the most effective in each situation. So next is the advantage of the theory. The theory is extremely well researched given the statement parameter the thumbs up on the wind approach to identify leaders Federer's contingency theory can assist enormous leaders with good personal relationship and match uh, proper structured poorly structured task environment for leader who are impersonal they their place in value
task structure environment because it is a con contingency theory is inherently more flexible than in takes of all theory. Shang advantage sa theory niya is the drawbacks of this theory. So the LPC scale is subjective or karang relax and context. Even to Fedler, the LPC score is valid only for groups that are closely supervised and doesn't apply to open ones such as such as team. It is questionable whether Fedler's contingency theory is valid in all situations such as when neither the task is well defined and no choice of the leader is to ha to be have had except ones with bad personalities. Zero defects. Referred to as a philosophy, a mentality, or a movement, it aims to minimize the number of defects in manufactured products and services as much as possible. It is a management tool aimed at the reduction of defects through prevention. As a mentality or a movement, it is directed at motivating people to prevent mistakes by developing a constant conscious desire to do their job right the first time. Zero defects is so effective because it means it's adaptable to any situation, business, profession, or industry. It is a term coined by Mr. Philip Crossby in his book, Absolutes of Quality Management. It is a way of thinking and doing that reinforces the notion that defects are not acceptable and that everyone should do things right the first time. The idea here is that with a philosophy of de zero defects, you can increase profits both by eliminating the cost of failure and increasing revenues through increased customer satisfaction. Like I said, Zero defects refers to as a mentality or a movement which involves reconditioning the worker to take a personal interest in everything he does. For example, by convincing him that his job is just as important as the task of the doctor. Zero defects is a standard. or a level of quality or attainment, which measure against which any system, process, action, or outcome can be analyzed. When zero defects is the goal, every aspect of the business is subject to scrutiny in terms of whether it measures up. It means that when your goal in your business is to lessen or minimize the number of defects in manufactured products, Every aspect of your business is under critical observation, examination, and inspection. Zero defects is not about being perfect. Zero defects is about changing your perspective. It does this by demanding that you recognize the high cost of quality issues. Continuously think of the places where flaws may be introduced. Work proactively to address the flaws in your systems and processes, which allow defects to occur. Brainstorming What is brainstorming? Brainstorming is a method design teams use to generate ideas to solve clearly defined design problems in controlled conditions and a free thinking environment. It is a group creativity tactic by which efforts are made to find a conclusion for a specific problem by gathering a list of ideas spontaneously contributed by its members. Alex Osborne theorized that in order to have an effective brainstorming session, the group must defer judgment or avoid judgment. Don't 
point fingers when bad ideas are presented. Just accept the ideas that's been shared and reach for quantity. Focus on the quantity of ideas over quality. The rules of brainstorming. Rule number one. Don't immediately get everyone involved. Just let them talk one by one. Do give people some time to think on their own. Rule number two. Don't put limitations on the brainstorming session. The more ideas, the better. Do allow everyone to talk openly without structure. Rule number three. Don't shoot down ideas right away. Do not ignore ideas without consulting to others. Do make sure everyone shares at least one idea. Job enrichment. Job enrichment means improve or an increase with the help of grading development and expose employees to a variety of tasks that can help broaden the scope of their assigned job duties. Job enrichment expands the task set that you perform and the skill that you can develop. This makes for more stimulating and interesting work and adds variety, challenge, and depth to your daily routine. Enriched job give you more freedom, independence, and responsibility. Job enrichment attempts to give employees greater responsibility by increasing the range and complexity of tasks they are called upon to complete and give them the necessary authority. It motivates by giving employees the opportunity to use their abilities to the fullest. Job enrichment example. A warehouse worker whose primary job is stocking shelves could also help process incoming inventory and fill or fail order slip. The bank tailor handles deposit and disbursement. The bank tailor has the authority to help a client fill out a loan applicant and to approve the loan or not. Advantages of job enrichment. Job enrichment is useful to both the workers and the organization. The worker get achievement, recognition, and self-actualization. The worker gets a sense of belonging to the organization. The worker finds the job meaningful. It motivates the worker to give best performance. These advantages of job enrichment increase workload, lack of training and knowledge, high level of responsibility, poor performance involves cost, incapability, and favorable for the employees. Job enlargement. Job enlargement means to add more duties and increase workload. Job design technique wherein there is an increase in the number of tasks associated with a certain job. It requires appropriate training, especially on time and people management. Involves combining various activities at the same level in the organization and adding them to the existing. Enlargement is to motivate an employee by increasing his effort and exposure towards, towards achieving the organizational objectives as set for the job. By doing this, an employee can get a wider range of his or her objectives without his or her job in a repetitious manner. Job enlargement requires the management of the organization to provide their support in providing appropriate training to the employee to make them able to adapt to the enlarged job scope. Example of job enlargement. Mr. A is working as an executive with a company and is currently performing three activities on his job. Through job enlargement, they add four more activities to the existing job. So now, Mr. A performs seven activities on the job. A person in a bank who looks after the account receivable department is given a job enlargement and now is supposed to handle cash receivable as well as account maintenance and statement generation for customers. 
Advantages of job enlargement. Variety of skills. Help the organization to improve and increase the skills of the employee due to organization as well as the individual benefits. Improves airing capacity. With all the new activity a person learned from job enlargement, they are able to get a better salary when they apply for a new job. Wide range of activities. Employees are able to learn more activities which can help a company save money by reducing the number of employees they have. Disadvantages of job enlargement Increase work burden Job enlargement increases the work of the employee and not every company provides incentives and extra salary for extra work, increasing frustration of the employee. In many cases, employees end up being frustrated because increased activities do not result in increased salary. Problem with union member Many union members may misunderstood, misunderstand job enlargement as exploitation of workers and may take objection to it. What what is the difference between job enlargement and job enrichment? The difference between job enrichment and job enlargement is quality and quantity. Job enrichment, an employee finds satisfaction in respect to their position and personal growth potential, whereas job enlargement refers to having additional duties and responsibilities in a current job description. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, guys. Another topic is job rotation. What is job rotation? Job rotation is a movement of employees from one job to the other, or they're also often temporary with people moving back to the original job after a certain time. Example, an industry. Based on my experience in Cebu Mitsumi, line flow me dito, guys. There are 5 to 6 person each line and each person na ami tagsatag sang process. Then 9 times nang superior na mo maingon na, oy pantua adto ka didto nga process which is dili ako ana process. Iya may irritate sa lain na process. So these are the disadvantage of job rotation. First is inefficiencies. Meaning when an employee joins new role, they need to learn the ropes before reaching their optimum productivity level. The other one is misunderstanding. This is the other disadvantage that the person who rotates out of a role may still have superior knowledge and connections. And the other one is lack of opportunity. Job rotation is horizontally mean often horizontal meaning that people will not get a promotion but rather a different role in the same level these are also advantage of job rotation first is eliminates boredom yes it's true makawala jud siya sa kalaay ka nang basta i-rotate ka kay ka nang new workplace new new work kanang laing process so Dili ijud ka ka ng laayon, ka ng, murakag ka ng malingaw o ganahan ka mo trabaho. And the other advantage is gives employees a break. Example ka ng, naay ka ng process sa Mitsumi guys na ka ng lisod jud siya, ka ng, nakasulay jud ko ane nga, hapit dili na lang gani ko mo break kay, to ah, natambakan ko kay ka ng lisod jud kay ako nga process nga dili ko ka apas ba nya mo nang kanang murag maka break jud ko kung i i, i rotate me kay namay kanang uban nga dili para sa akong process sayon ra ilaha ni ako alisod pero dili jud ako awat kanang dili jud to permanente na ako kanang kanang ang permanente jud nako katong lisod flexible work schedule it is a matter of agreement between the employer and employees it allows an employee to work hours that differ from the normal company's start and stop time. Benefits to both employer and employees would be 
boosting productivity and managing employee attendance, reducing absenteeism. So, ako mismo, uh, as a virtual assistant, I have a flexible work schedule. So, ibig sabihin, Anna, uh, nagsabot namin sa akong employer na kung kanun saan ako pwedeng trabahoon ra ang mga tasks or project na ihatag niya na ako, which is agreeable din sa part po na ako kay as a student and a working mother po siya. So, um, pwede, flexible lang, since flexible akong oras, so, makaya rin akong uh, an, i-handle ang mga task um, depende sa pag-manage na ako sa akong time and that reduced actually the uh, absenteeism and mas, mas daghan dito kayo mabuhat SWOT Analysis A SWOT Analysis is a planning process that helps your company overcome challenges and determine what new leads to pursue so meaning Ang SWOT analysis is usa na siya ka pamaagi or way kung unsaon pag-overcome sa usa ka problema um, especially sa kumpanya. Tapos unsaon pud ug unsaon pud nato pagdetermine ug unsa atong dapat buhaton para ang atong kumpanya kay mas successful. So SWOT analysis stands for S is for strength W is for weaknesses, O for opportunities, and T is for threats. Characteristics of SWOT Analysis So, it focuses on the four elements of the acronym, allowing companies to identify the forces influencing a strategy, action, or initiative. Knowing this, positive and negative elements can help the companies more effectively communicate what parts of a plan need to be recognized. So, meaning, ang characteristic rigid sa SWOT analysis is para makahibaluta o um, unsa atong dapat buhaton para ang atong kumpanya kay ma successful. So, as you can see, naamoy makita diha upat ka box, which is nakasuwat diha ang strength, ang weaknesses, ang opportunities, o ang threats. So, strength is the areas wherein you do well or advantage of your organization. So, meaning, diri na to makitaan ang critical success factor sa atong kumpanya. Like, for example, special expertise. So, um, advantage ta sa side, nga expert ta or expertaan na nga butang kay ang kanang atong pagka-expertise kay pwede na siya pwede na siya natong gamiton as our strength next is weaknesses it is the areas wherein it needs improvement so needed pa siya improvement like for example uh, di ba sa usa ka kumpanya kay dili man jud na malikayan ang problema especially sa kanang unsaon pagmanage or giunsa pagmanage ang mga staff or managing of staff so mao na siya usa ka maka trigger sa weakness you know, in order to overcome it so dapat na jud may closure or dapat magkandak jud mo session para tabian para tabian ang ingon ana nga mga butang para ma-settle ra dayon Next is the opportunity. It is the areas wherein it may have contribution to the organization and can build up your strength. So meaning, maon ni siya yung mga um, nindot nga niabot nga makakontribute sa atong organization. Like for example, uh, mga new technology or mga new market services. So, usa ni siya ka mga opportunity nga niabot dayon um Makabuild up po niya strength kung um, expert aning mga bagong niabot. Like, for example, if expert aning nga niabot nga bagong nga technology, so, makabuild po ni siya sa atong strength. So, mauna siya. Dayon ang last, kay ang threats. So, ang threats, kay it is the areas wherein makita ni mo ang risk, the risk that may face by the organization. So, diri dapita is, um, Dili na to makitaan ang risgo nga pwedeng ato bangon sa kumpanya. Like for example, economic slowdown. Um, de ba? Pareha karon sa atong um, sa atong panahon karon kay pandemic, de ba? So, ang atong ekonomiya is naghina kay tungod aning COVID. 
So, mao na siya usa sa mga example sa threats nga pwedeng mahitabo sa or pwedeng ma-face sa usa ka organization or kompanya. So, next. So, ang strength ug ang weaknesses is belong na siya sa internal factors which means mao na siya mao na siya ang mga panghitabo nga kanang ato nang na-experience like for example or kanang mga butang ba nga available na sa tua so example kanang mga financial um financial resources oh, di ba ako ana na siya na to so mga physical resources like location uh, facilities equipment o silbi di ba ato naman na siyang um available naman na siya na to sa so dayon human resources like employees volunteers na na so mga available na siya na to so mo na siya na consider na siya na belong na siya sa internal environment factors or internal factors next next madto na pud sa external environmental factors so ugong ang strength ug weaknesses kay sa internal factors so ang opportunity ug ang threat kay ato siya sa external factors so din he so mao na siya ang mga panghitabo nga dili nato makontrol or mapredict so like for example um kuan mga market trends so dili nato makontrol nga naay bag-ong technology advancement nya na po yung mga new products nga moabot so dili nato na siya makontrol so mao na siya ang nabilong na siya sa external factors so, kanus aman ta mo for form og SWOT analysis. So, anytime. Pwede ra jud kaayo ta mag-perform aning SWOT analysis. Bisag even though wala pa ta naka-experience og um mga dagkong problema or problema, pwede ra jud kaayo whether you are exploring new initiatives. And um wise pud kaayo ang usa ka tawo if if kanang Kung sa wala pa problema, baka yung nag-explore na siya. So, kanang, then, para po, kanang, makabalo siya ba if asa dapit ang iyang kumpanya ni perform, ni perform optimally, o asa po ang iyang kumpanya needed o adjustment. Hi everyone! So, akong topic kay vision, mission, goals, and objective. Identification and formulation. So, bali akong identify ang VMGO niya i-formulate through using examples. So, start with vision. So, kung na vision ng mga school, nasa na vision ang business or ang company? So, vision focuses on tomorrow and what we want to become. So, na dire o ang vision ka-focus sa kaugmaon. Ka-focus siya sa maabot ng kaugmaon. In business, vision describes company's purpose. Usa nga butang nga maka-describe ug unsay purpose sa kampanya and what the company is striving for and what it wants to achieve. Why nga ang kompanya or gusto jud sa kompanya nga ma-achieve? So, kaning vision magamit ni siya. Next, importance of vision. Ano kinahanglan na ay vision? It means kung naay vision, naay purpose ug naay padulngan. Having a vision provides a sense of purpose and direction for business. Meaning, gahatag siya og purpose sa kompanya niya direction for business ang iyang padulungan. Bad ba or good? Vision will help you define your short and long-term goals. Sa so, vision, makatabang sa ni siya mo define sa imong short and long-term goals. Sa so, sakong nasabda lang yun kay ang short term, example, if dagan lang yung halin mong kampanya or kosob, kosob lang yun siya, and then, ang long-term goals, example, ako sa ka-businesswoman, gusto dyan ko nga kung kapaning mo dako. Kaya na ko nga kung kapaning ha, panghabang buhay na ba? Muna siyang kalahin na sa short and long-term goals. So, another example, the vision of McDonald. The vision of McDonald to move with velocity, to drive profitable growth, and become an ever better. McDonald serving more customers delicious food each day around the world. So, their vision ko no is mutas ilang ginan siya. Uh, better ko ng McDonald's in serving delicious food sa mga customers each day around the world. So, let's proceed to mission. If na ay vision, syempre nasa na siya mission. So, mission focuses on today and what the organization does. So, nadari o mission focuses on today. So, example, as a student, 
unsa man jud atong mission? Syempre nga atong mission kay ang magtuon. Magtuon para di mahagbong. It is also a short statement of why all organization exists and what its overall goal is. So, muna siya ga-explain of the state and why ang organization exists. Example, Japan kita sa student. Ganong na-exist man ta? It's because na atay mission. Ano ka simple? Next, importance of mission. It focuses on what kind of product or services it provides. It primary customer or market. Example, company. or ang restaurant nagfocus or maghatag og unsa nga product ang unahon para sa customer example the mission of McDonald's McDonald's brand mission is to be our customer their favorite place and way to eat and drink sa so, McDonald's mission kuno kay maujud ang favorite place sa mga customer maujud kuno favorite place sa mga tao nga ginablik-blikan so let's proceed to goals So, if ang vision as a kaugmaon, din ang goals naman kay gisit na na ni mo. Goal statement, the desired result of process improvement project. So, another ra, ang goal of McDonald. Their main aims are to serve good food in a friendly, fun environment to be a socially responsible company. So, syempre, ikaw usag trabaho din sa McDonald. Lain sa kayo yung mag-sarcastic ka. O dapat respectful ka sa mga customers. Dapat friendly lang job ka, di ba? And importance of goals. Goals are powerful. So, sa tanong VMGO, kaya ang goals ko na maay powerful. They can focus attention on achieving desirable outcomes. So, di hamang focus or hatagan ng attention kung why mission, why vision, why goals o lagi hapon. Yung stasyo po ng tanan. Pareharo ko na ito sa student kung wala tayo vision, wala tayo mission, wala tayo goals. Wala rin kaya po ipadulungan. Lastly, kaya ang objectives. So, objective in business are the specific and measurable results companies hope to maintain as the organization grows. So, they remallocate ang strength, weaknesses, o opportunities of your business. Asa nagkulang imong business or asa nagsobra. Importance of objective, give a business direction, purpose, and unity. Pagkahiusa. Form the foundation of decision making. So, diha nga part masahod ang decision making. Pananglitan, na-exchangeable sa inyong business kung kung sa'yo dapat ma-improve. There are three examples of popular business objectives includes per productivity and performance, customer satisfaction, and growth. So guys, pasensya na kayo. Kaya na maudara ang nabutang ng mamsi. Kaya syempre, gido ka siya ni... Pa siya'y tulog ang himo ano yung pipiti ko. So sorry kayo, pasensya ako na lang yung basahon. So first, kay productivity and performance. Making sure that employees remain productive drives revenue and improves customer satisfaction. So in business, dapat productive ang mga employees sa company and though masatisfy ang customers sa ilang mga service. Next, customer satisfaction. The customer is always a top priority in business. Ika nga nila, customers is always right ban daw. So, priority ang customers in order for them to satisfy and to know what are the impressions sa pag-manage sa ilang product and services. Last, growth. Companies measure growth over the long term and short term. So, dapat kahibang company, if ni-grow ba ilahang company or wala pa sila ganun siya or logi ba. So, that's all for today, guys. Thank you for listening. God bless us all. This is the end of our report. Again, this is group one. Thank you for watching and stay safe. God bless.